Hey, Boaz here with Next Pittsburgh. We're here in Sheridan at the One Sound Urban Farm, and we're here to chat with Haley from the Allegheny County Conservation District. And so, what is happening here today? I guess you're here to do some soil testing? We are, yes. Thanks so much for joining us. So, um, Allegheny County Conservation District, we work with urban farmers throughout the county to come to their sites, collect soil samples, and analyze them for lead so that we can make sure that they are growing safely and producing safe food for themselves, their families, and their communities. What kind of things are you looking for when you're testing at a site like this? We're going to collect some soil samples. We're going to analyze them using our field tool called an XRF. Um, and we're going to see what the heavy metal content is. I'm here with Ebony here, and this is your farm. Yes, so this is One Sound Urban Farm, and this is a place for the community to have access to fresh food, and also it's a place for the community to learn how to grow the food and just how to take care of it and how to harvest it. And what is the history of this site? Um, it used to be, from what I'm told, uh, two houses was here at some point. When I took over it, it was a pretty overgrown site. Over these last four years, we've turned it into an urban space, and so we're excited about where we're going. Yeah. Well, it's wild because it's so dense. I mean, you've clearly packed in so much like so many vegetables in like a pretty small lot. Yeah, yeah. Um, so believe it or not, uh, last season we grew over 5,000 pounds of That's food insane. here. Yes. Can you give us like a little a little tour of what's happening now in the garden? Sure, absolutely. So right here where we're standing, this is our herb garden. There's thyme, there's basils, there's mint. Behind us, I see some more familiar things. I see some tomatoes back there, some sort of squash or zucchini. Yes. It's like rows of peppers. Then we have beans and squash, then tomatoes. But then up there, we have potatoes grown, growing all up there. And I, I spotted a little chicken mascot too walking around. Yes, so we yeah, we we actually we have two chickens. Their names are Ebony and Patrice, mm -hmm. and they are super fun. They're for education purposes and they give us fun eggs. It's super fun, especially with the youth, you know, coming to learn how to just hold a chicken yeah. and just understanding how uh, hens produce eggs, where they come from. And so do you have a lot of like neighbors coming down to to weed or work in the garden or or you know, get some tomatoes? Yeah, absolutely. We share uh, the food with everybody around here. Uh, we do programming here. So a lot of the youth, they come here uh, weekly and they help take care of the garden and then they're able to take the food home. So like that's that, that's the best part. And they all live around here. You know? It's wild just because like growing in an urban environment is so different than growing, you know, somewhere out in the country because it's here. It's like, who knows what was here 100 years ago? Right. I didn't even think about that. Yeah. You know, whenever we had first started growing, uh, the first thing we did was we got the soil sampled. Right. You know, I didn't know why, but it was like, oh, OK, well, we, we get the soil sampled. And then when I started reading the results to just understand uh, what they were, I didn't necessarily understand them. The only thing I was looking for, well, is it safe to grow food? Is right. it safe to grow food? And so ultimately I found out, yes, it is safe to grow food but there may be some deficiencies. Yeah, there were two houses here at some point. Yeah. And those houses are essentially up under <laughs> all of the soil. You just like we've bulldozed them down there. there. Yeah, yeah, we've been tilling it out. I feel like every year, every brick that you see around here is from what we found. At some point, we dug up a, um, a mattress frame. <laughs> What? That's wild. Yeah, yeah like last night. Uh, that that's a letdown. You're like, oh, is it buried treasure? You're yeah, like, ah, mattress frame. It was like a whole mattress frame. I'm like, what is this doing here? Yeah. And it wasn't visible to, you know, the, the eye. We were tilling and it just ran. And so, and it helped me to understand that, okay, this is why it's important yeah. to make sure that we do these testings and, you know, using these as sites to grow food. We're feeding the community. Um, I, I certainly want to make sure that we're feeding the community with safe food. Sure. What we'll do once we get to the site, we map it. You can see um, across this whole site, there are blue flags every 10 feet. Oh. So we create these 10 foot by 10 foot sample boxes. We're going to pull from five spots in that box okay. using my soil probe. So I'm going to collect those from those five spots, put them in my bucket, mix it around, okay. and then I'm going to make sure that I have it in my drying bag. And we will do this across the entire site. 
And is it just because Pittsburgh has such an industrial past? Like you probably can't throw a rock here without hitting a former mine. Like, is that why it's like it's such a big issue here? Yeah, great question. So lead, particularly in our soil, comes from a few different sources. Um, So the first most common source is that um, maybe there was an old structure on a vacant lot built prior to the 1970s and probably used lead paint in its construction. So then whenever it's demoed, right, um, a lot of that lead paint sticks around. Um, The next source that we find is, you know, as late as the 1990s, leaded gasoline was being used. You know, leaded gasoline would produce emissions and part of those emissions would be lead particulate that fell to the ground and is now in our soil. The final and third source of of lead in our region, we are such an industrial region, coke smelts and everything produced again pollution, a byproduct of that is particulate lead that again fell to the ground over the region. So for the samples being collected at Ebony's site today, we'll take them back to the lab, we'll actually let them dry for a full week and then we'll begin phase two. Today I brought some samples from a previous site um, and we're going to map them as kind of a on a fictional farm just so you can see the whole process but safety first so I'm wearing my PPE I'm wearing gloves and I'm gonna wear um, a mask to make sure I'm not inhaling soil particles as I process inhaling soil with lead um, as well as ingesting it on the surface of food are the two most common pathways to soil lead exposure the first thing I do after my samples been dried is I'm going to grind it up using my mortar and pestle so gonna give it a good grind here so we have our sieve here gonna close her up give it a little shake and I need at least um, a half cup of material to test it the tool that I'm using here today is called an XRF unit Um, XRF because it does use x-ray luckily um, we do also have a lead stand um, and box that protects you know surrounding areas isn't it weird that it's a lead stand and we're looking for lead in this case the lead's good exactly right so lead's a naturally occurring element sometimes it can be harmful sometimes it can protect us so I'm gonna put it in here we're gonna turn on the machine and Press start. The XRF takes less than 60 seconds to analyze the sample for heavy metals. Wow, I barely remember my um, periodic table, but I know those are some shortened versions of some of those elements. It seems like it's already like measuring these things, your little percentages flashing on that screen. It is. As the beam is moving through the sample, right, we're getting some um, some different results. So we're looking at our results, we can see the different elements that are in here. The The heavy metals that we're most confident about the XRF's ability to measure is um, lead and arsenic. So looking down, if you remember, studying a periodic table, lead is PB. And we're seeing that this sample um, is 894 parts per million. That's sort of high. It is. If you remember, so that is relatively high. Um, And so what we're going to do now is we're going to record that result on our farm's map. It is considered to be medium risk, right? We want, we're definitely going to take action on that. We'll keep going through. We will color code it and then we can see some patterns about, you know, if there's high lead in one corner. Because maybe there's like one corner and they like there were like three buckets of lead paint there and then the rest of it's fine. Exactly, right? So this process can really help a farmer with their site planning. Once we get the results to the farmer um, or the site steward, we work hand in hand with them to decide, you know, now that you know, um, if you have a less than ideal result, what do we do about it? And there's definitely a lot of interventions, you know, to reduce the lead concentration on your site. What's tough about lead is that it never fades away. Um, It doesn't leach in the soil profile, um, but we can dilute it to a point that is lower risk, or, you know, we can just remove access to that lead, put down a tarp, a lot of mulch, build raised beds on top, and then you've completely reduced your risk to exposure as well. And so if folks are interested in even testing their yard or if they're a part of a community garden, how can they get in touch with you? 
Absolutely. So if you're an urban farmer, a community gardener, uh, maybe you steward a green space or a parklet in your neighborhood, definitely reach out to Allegheny County Conservation District. You can request assistance on our website um, and we will come and do this style of sampling and analyzing for you. If you are a homeowner or a backyard gardener, we also have resources for you. Um, we host two types of events for homeowners and residents throughout the county, um, either drop off or pop up soil screening events where you collect your own sample. Sort of BYOD, bring your own dirt. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Um, so, yep, you bring your own dirt. You either drop it off um, in one of our collection sites or you bring it to our pop-up tent, maybe at the farmer's market, the county fair, and we'll run it for you right on site. Thank you so much for the tour and the demonstration. This was so cool. Absolutely. So glad to share it with you. And, uh, yeah, happy safe gardening.